Hi, I'm Debbie Morais, and once again, this is Legal Matters, the program that's been designed to address timely, critical, sometimes contentious issues that are facing consumers and businesses today. It's legal information, practical solutions, and straight talk about a wide variety of topics that affect your business and your work life, your home life. Um, we welcome once again our sponsors, which are Odette Bazaar, Cadero Grasso Law Firm in East Providence, Jackie Grasso, and David Bazaar. Hello. Hi. In the past, recent past, we were discussing ethics, attorneys, some misconduct. Today we're going to tackle a different topic, whistleblowing and retaliation. Would you think that employees are increasingly willing these days to blow the whistle when they see fraud, corruption, general unlawful behavior at their place of employment? Well, apparently since 2005 there's been a spike in whistleblower cases filed with the federal government, this according to OSHA. And apparently one of the country's biggest law firms has seen such an uptick that they have uh, actually put together a special practice just to handle the amount of extra workload in handling such cases. So if this is a trend, um, it's one that labor and shareholder advocates are certainly going to applaud, but companies are certainly going to dread. Should you or shouldn't you blow the whistle? Um, other states have st states have laws certainly, but does that keep you from not just being fired, not being fired, but also keep you from being sent to Siberia? So today we're going to cover what's true, what's law, what you should do, and maybe the kinds of things you can consider. So, Jackie, David, there's a law in Rhode Island about uh, whistleblowing. Tell yeah, us about it. Yeah, I believe it. 38 states in the country have laws. Rhode Island happens, to, fortunately, happens to be one of the 38. Right. There, there, is, there is a law in Rhode Island that protects um, employees from whistleblowing. Yeah, the Rhode Island Whistleblowers Protection Act. Why don't you describe some of the things that are covered in that? Uh, it protects someone from uh, reporting uh, their employer for violating um, a local law, federal law, or a local ordinance, state law, um, gross mismanagement, misuse of funds, uh, public funds, an abuse of authority, um, or creating some kind of substantial danger to public health and safety. Oh, how about things that are just uh, not good business practice? Is that covered? I don't think that's enough. Well, it depends. There's also federal statutes that are involved in this, too. Mm -hmm. um, good business practices in the sense that you're doing something illegal, but it's not a good business practice, would not be covered. That's correct. If you think that you might have seen or not actually been part of um, something that's illegal in the workplace and you've thought about it, you have some information, you're not really sure, what should an employee do? What's the process before they actually um, go to the law? I think they have a choice. I think what they can do is either go to their immediate supervisor and disclose whatever it is that they uh, believe has been um, violated. Um, if they're afraid of retaliation with the supervisor, they can go to local law enforcement. Right. Depending on what is being violated. Could be federal. And yeah. it depends on the employer and what yeah. the regulations are that govern them. If you know if there's some gross mismanagement going on, you go to your supervisor first, I would assume, or mm -hmm. if it's your supervisor who's responsible, someone above them, and try to resolve it within the business. Um, if you're not getting anywhere, and for instance, I'll stop making things up. Let's suppose you work for a nursing home and you see that there are violations going on. Nursing homes are regulated by the state. You bring it to the proper state authorities if the people who are responsible for curing the problem that you work for won't do it. Mm -hmm. Now that's different from just going to HR. Who does HR work for, by the way, but that corporation? Perhaps they handle it, but also the minute they report it to their supervisor or the company CEO or president, Maybe he stifles it, maybe he handles it, maybe you end up with um, a less than wonderful new job that you shouldn't have. Um, help prepare us, say, shy of a case. What should an employee do if he, starts, he sees something that's going on? Obviously, they're not going to um, just cry wolf when there's not something to substantiate it. And I guess I'm getting to the point of saying, how about emails or what do you document? How much do you have to do before you should go to that HR and blow that whistle? Well, I think you need to have supporting documentation, but then you also run the risk that you're taking proprietary information. Yeah, it, 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 it you is. You have a, to be very discreet in what you do. It's a bit of a two-edged yeah, sword. Yeah. Um, so what you have to do is act um, responsibly, I would start with. 
And if you see something going on that you think is inappropriate and you want to bring it to your employer's attention first and see if they can do something to correct the problem with the idea that you may, if they don't bring it to the proper authorities, then you're protected under the Whistleblower Act even if you haven't yet brought it to the proper authorities. It's the idea that you're going to or about to bring it to them brings you in the protection. I think it's important to note that you don't have to go directly to your immediate supervisor. That's a choice that you take. Um, if you don't think you're going to get any um, any benefit in, dis in disclosing it to the supervisor, then one can go to local or state law enforcement, even federal. Yeah, and, and the statute talks about something being reported either verbally or in writing. Mm -hmm. Of course, it would be wise to document something if you yes. can, but you do say that there's some reason to be careful about it. What happens if you happen to be in the workplace, and we'll keep it focused on the workplace for the moment, and do you see um, child abuse going on? Report it to HR or report it to the state authorities and police? Well, if it's child abuse, I'm assuming you're working in a daycare center. Maybe. So you have an obligation to report it because you're a mandated reporter. Right. I would report it, um, I, I don't know, I guess it's a personal decision. If, mm -hmm. if you have uh, somebody who um, is uh, like an absentee manager, maybe that person should know about it. Maybe the person's not aware of it. Um, there are different rules. I think you have rules. to report it to the state. The different rules that apply to different occupations, yeah. teachers, uh, medical providers, daycare providers, mm -hmm. they have to report to DCYF if they see child abuse. It's mandatory reporting. Mm -hmm. There are things that you might happen to see that don't fall within your employer's domain that are inappropriate in a child abuse situation that you as a person ought to report just because it's the right thing to do. Now, as far as it being a whistleblower type of situation, unless it falls within the scope of the employment, um, it doesn't sound like it, it's something that would necessarily be protected under the Whistleblowers Act. Mm -hmm. How about the coach in the locker room of the football team who happens to see something that is clearly child abuse? Yeah. Reports it to HR? Is that where it ends? Or I are think, you re again, required you're dealing to with a school setting so that coach as a mandated reporter would have to report it to... Um, in our Chelsea. state DCYF. Yeah, yeah state DCYF. Yeah. Yeah. Or the state police. Yeah. Um, and mm. it, depending on the situation, if now you're saying, I see child abuse that, you know, we were thinking in terms of maybe it's uh, parental child abuse. That's a DCYF report. If it's um, abuse of a child by another adult who's not the parent, then it's a state police um, report. Certainly, I think that if you fear police. for retaliation, there is recourse. Maybe it does fall under a whistleblowers act. If it does, if that particular state happens to be one of the two that doesn't, that uh, one of the few that don't have whistleblower case uh, protection act, I would think you have a claim for wrongful termination. So you can always um, pursue that. Right, a and in a coaching situation now, if it's a coach abusing a child who is under his care as part of his coaching duties. Um, that is part of your employment in the situation that um, you're protected by, I would suggest. Yeah. How about sexual harassment in the workplace first? You blow the whistle. Suppose the victim is fearful and figures that there could be some repercussions by that perpetrator. You see this. What do you do? What's, do you become the whistleblower? Um, Go ahead. I, I believe, yeah, I mean, if, if you know that something like that is going to occur and you fear for um, any retaliation, I think, first of all, the employer has an obligation to provide a safe workplace. That's right. And if they don't, then, then again, you go back to the tort um, for providing a hostile workplace. There might be some damages right. that would happen. And, and Jackie's they, right. They, yeah. There's an obligation on the employer's part to make sure that there's nothing wrong going on here, a safe work environment. And so the way you phrase the hypothetical is that you observe someone else being the victim of a sexual harassment, and the victim himself or herself isn't reporting it and hasn't done anything about it. Th there's a fine line here is one thing you might want to do, depending on your relationship with the victim, is to talk to the victim himself or herself and find out what's going on and is this something that they ought to not be tolerating and assist them in reporting it. Um, or if you don't have that kind of relationship and you want to 
report it to management so that they can at least investigate it, I think you have an obligation to do something to protect somebody you think who's the victim of some of this kind of conduct. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a matter of conscience there too to, that weighs in. Um, if you don't, if you have done um, something, called the HR department or tried to alert somebody, are you responsible to follow up once you've opened that door? And I'm thinking also, what more could uh, Paterno have done, or what more are you supposed to do beyond just that initial whistle blowing? If you see something, you might not have been able to document it uh, or produce the email verification that there just might not be such evidence. Uh, I, what I happens would think next? if you report it to um, federal authorities, uh, state or uh, local authorities, that's their, that's their uh, right. job. They have to follow up on that. They're going to be investigating if it's criminal. And when I hear whistleblower, I, I think of you know, someone disclosing violation of a state or federal law, um, you know, misusing public funds. Right. Or, um, that's what I think of. But in the case of the coach, I would think that if he disclosed it to a supervisor, then it's up to them to investigate. Jackie's right. And in, in the example that you're giving, your hypothetical, mm -hmm. the um, coach reports what he saw to his supervisor, who's the head coach. Technically, he's done what he's supposed to do. Now the head coach is supposed to take it somewhere. Mm -hmm. As a matter of conscience, you might want to follow up on that. Just, mm -hmm. you know, if I reported to the coach, hey, coach, what's going on with this situation? I still see this guy here. You know, why? Um, mm -hmm. I think it's completely reasonable to follow up. I don't think it's legally necessarily required, but it's the right thing to do. And I think taking that one step further, if the coach finds out that nothing's being done to rectify the situation, then maybe instead of going back to the supervisor, then, then you go to the local police right. department. you take the next step. Yeah. Let's take a very concrete and local example um, in a work situation that happened to be a school si situation where a teacher at Tollgate, I guess, had um, been asked by a school counselor to change a student's grade from an A plus to an N for no grade. And the teacher decided that she would not do that. She refused to change the grade and reported the incident to the administrators and to the union. And she then says that uh, the Tollgate High School principal, this is a couple of years ago, harassed her and eventually fired her. So of course it goes to court. Well, apparently the um, finding is for the school and against her. She's fired, it stands. Not a great outcome. Not no. everything has that kind of outcome. Um, if you were thinking about these kinds of situations, clearly you'd say she did the right thing. Many people end up being in that situation. The reason I bring it up, how about the fact that you understand there may be some consequences here? How do you counsel someone if, say, they come to you and say, I'm not sure what, I know what the right thing is to do, but there's a law, but obviously it doesn't always work. I think you go with your conscience. Yeah, you have it, to live with your conscience. There's a law, and, and, but it doesn't always apply. Yeah. The factual setting that you laid out in that story doesn't, and I don't know all of the facts, but it doesn't, from what you're saying to, to me, come under any of the c cover that you would have in the Whistleblowers Act. It said something about uh, that they found in favor of the school. The jury for the Superior Court of Kent County of Rhode Island found Warwick Public School District not liable under the Rhode Island Whistleblower Protection Act for wrongful termination of this teacher. Were there other, there must have been other issues going on right. in that case. Yeah, th those facts don't yeah. line up to this act. I know they brought the case under the act and mm -hmm. it sounds to me, without knowing more, and I need to know more to really tell you, sure. is that the jury made the right decision because from those facts it doesn't sound like it's a whistleblower's case. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be other things in that case that we don't know about that the jury heard and disregarded, but from that story I don't hear Maybe it. they could have brought it uh, just as a wrongful termination case instead of having that higher standard of proof under the Right, because it's clear and convincing yeah, evidence yeah. under the Whistleblowers Act. And of course there's, she was saying that she was harassed also before being fired. So again, clearly she's supposed to be doing the right thing. That's, that's w the, what you would suggest that a teacher mm -hmm. do. I'm not, it's not ethical for me to change that grade. She 
perhaps, would you say, should have started documenting the correspondence that came back and forth? She couldn't have tape recorded, I guess, no. the conversation between the counselor, and that couldn't have happened. But Well, in Rhode Island it could. But we, yeah, you have to have permission. One of the parties has, one to, party. has to agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one party taping in Rhode Island, but yeah. that's a whole different issue. The issue is, I'm sure she did. I would hope that she did document everything that she did and why she did it. And from what you're telling me there, it sounds like she had an ethical belief and reason to do what she did. And that's my advice is do what you think is right. And does she have recourse for saying that she might, she should not have been terminated based on just this alone? Should she appeal? Is someone likely to appeal on that? On those grounds? You know, the, the, the appellate process is uh, expensive. Uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe it is under appeal. Or maybe she just didn't have the finances to take it up to a higher court. This probably isn't the time, but it sort of is the time to say that while there's um, an actual index, there's a report card for accountability, Rhode Island doesn't stack up very well against the mm -hmm. other states, something like 33 out of the 38. 50 states that uh, mm -hmm. shows that we're not doing a great job of this kind of accountability or some kind of accountability based on several factors. What I, I think that report you're referring to really is doing, it's looking at our statute and saying, does it cover all of these types of areas and our statute is a little bit limited maybe if our statute was more broadly written that teacher might have been covered under the whistleblowers act our, our statute i think it's pretty good actually mm -hmm. but it's not as broadly based and written as some of the other state statutes and of course nothing's foolproof how about the fact that the um, feds seem to be stepping up the plate and having um, some sort of incentive a monetary in incentive key tom key time actions. Would you care to well, elaborate a little bit about my that? My understanding of that is if you personally bring a whistleblower's action based on governmental waste or something of that nature, and you become the plaintiff in that case, whatever monetary award there is, uh, you would actually be entitled to a percentage of. It's a great incentive, isn't it? Well, honestly, I understand that there might be an incentive because someone's taking a big risk, and there are countless stories that made um, headlines, never mind movies, because people have had very bad mm -hmm. outcomes, namely yeah. being dead. Karen Silkwood, for one example, but certainly that's an extreme right. example. The other side of it is, um, looking at it in another way, if someone is being incentivized to report, wouldn't that open the door to a lot of um, potentially disgruntled employees who, for their own poor performance at work, decided to blow a whistle and hope they get a big payout. Of course, I'm sure you have abuse everywhere, but I, I would like to think the federal government is equipped to... to ferret those uh, out. Yeah, ferret those and out. And the theory of this is um, you're working, let's say, makeup, we'll give you a hypothetical back, mm -hmm. at a um, federal park um, somewhere in the Midwest or the West or whatever, and you see the federal government wasting millions of dollars on things going on in that park. So you report it up to your supervisor and nothing's being done about it. So you bring this private action. The idea is that these actions are brought to save the government money in the long term. Yes, and they're supposed to be pretty good at trying to um, ferret that out, explain what's going on, and determine whether or not it's suit-worthy. In my reading about this, there, was, um, there were also some other caveats. Namely, once you report, blow the whistle, for this key Tom provision. Mm -hmm. That means, yes, you could make some money on it if there's gross negligence and wasting of the government's money. But it also means that you can't report it elsewhere. It can't go public. You have to have it documented. And you can't say a word mm -hmm. until the government decides that there's a case that's worthy of being tried or prosecuted or whatever. Right. Um, at, during that time, if you end up, someone ends up finding out that you have contacted the authorities you haven't been fired yet, but you suddenly start being victimized by your employer. What do you do? Just on a practical level, what do you do? Well, if you're under a confidentiality, I don't know. I don't think that uh, yeah. you can bring a, a case under the Whistleblower Act at this yeah. point if they don't want you to disclose. There, there are you certain do. protections yeah. you, you can have, um, but it, it and I, I don't think you're limited in maybe you're limited in describing in detail the particularities of what you've brought, but you can certainly, I believe, raise the fact that you have brought this issue to the attention of other people and you need to be protected while this is going through the process. And what if it's not that your employer is causing you to be victimized, but say your co-workers are? 
Does that make a difference? No, because you're still under the same um, the same roof. I mean, the employer has an uh, obligation to provide a safe working environment. And if there's a hostile environment that they know or should have known that was um, occurring, they can be liable for damages. The employer is liable for the actions of Vicarious its employees. Vicarious liability. Yeah. Correct. In many of the cases that we've read, there's usually it's usually about the larger companies. They have an HR department, so there are layers of management mm -hmm. in between. What about the case when you have a smaller company and there's you and your boss? Mm. Um, how do you protect yourself beyond keeping an email? How do you protect yourself from that boss? Because you don't have an intermediary. Is it wise to perhaps consult with a lawyer first, consult with um, or try to get other people within your organization to rally and support you or buy into it? What's, what's a good process or what's a good thought process before you decide to take that bold step with the consequences? Well, I think it's always good to consult with an attorney on an issue like this. Right. Because you don't want to be forced into doing uh, something uh, or participating in the illegal activity out of fear that you're going to lose your job. Right, so you need to protect yourself. Yeah. And I think getting that legal advice is certainly this first step. In terms of how you're going to deal with that boss in the small company who is going to fire you once you do anything, um, I think you need to assess the relationship you have with that person and whether or not there's going to be um, repercussions immediately when you raise the issue or if you need to just report it out immediately and suffer those repercussions with the boss once that's done. And practically speaking, is that a place where you want to work? It, exactly. Uh, on the other side of it, if you confront your boss, you have them dead to rights or her mm -hmm. dead to rights, and they decide that the boss decides that rather than victimize them, we'll just promote them. A nice way of subtly uh, rewarding that silence. And then the coworkers start to make your life miserable. Is that just an untenable work situation, or is there something illegal going on there that you're supposed to do something about? I get back to the vicarious liability answer. There right. are employers responsible for the activities of the employees. Yeah, Jackie's 100% right. The rights and duties of the employer don't end at how they treat you. If there's other things going on in the workplace that they're responsible for, including the conduct of your co-employees, they have to help step in and make sure that those are done and handled correctly. The companies which have detailed HR policies will often say, um, if we certainly support your coming forward, we want everything to be clear, transparent, upfront. Um, you should be able to approach your HR department, your supervisor, whatever. If someone starts to think that there's something going on and they begin to document a case, they collect the contacts, the names, the emails as we referred to, they tape a telephone conversation, they're doing that during their work day, presumably, unless they're staying at night. Let's assume that they're not at the moment. This is an employee at Will State. Could that employee be fired for having done this versus his or her job? And what do you do when that case that takes place? Well, I think the same thing. You fall under the whistleblower protection law. Yeah. And if, if, if you're building a case, the only place you can build it, if it's happening at work, is right. at work. You still do have your obligation to do your to job. Do your work. And yeah. we still are an at-will state. So you have to make sure that there's a case, that there really is a case, and now you're just backfilling the documentation so that you have the protection. Um, and as you're doing that, you have to perhaps start taking the appropriate steps of letting your employer know or the proper authorities know so that the protection of the Whistleblower Act is going to pro be applied to you. You mentioned something at the uh, beginning of our discussion, Jackie. Uh, and I'll say, suppose you are the employee and you are writing a journal or a diary, which will be part of that documentation to support what your accusation is about to be. You're doing that on <coughs> corporate time. Does that mean the employer owns it and that's he has some rights to it versus you having rights to it when it's your own? No, I, you have a right to privacy. No, the employer doesn't own that. If you're writing a journal, uh, you're not taking any uh, employee... You're proprietary not taking, secrets. Yeah, not taking any proprietary secrets. You're not removing any uh, property that is owned by the employer. Right. I think you have your right to privacy. 
How your about, own thoughts. Yeah, your mm -hmm. own thoughts. How about when you are keeping careful record of events, keep in mind that your employer, I'm quoting here, keep in mind that your employer will have access to your diary if there's a lawsuit and yeah, potentially sue it. you for libel or slander. It's subject to discovery if there mm -hmm. is a lawsuit. Right. It can be subpoenaed. You have to know that in advance that whatever you're writing is going to be right. the center and, of the and lawsuit. The idea is you're supposed to be tracking factual things that are true, mm -hmm. not your thoughts um, that are opinions that might be slanderous or libel. Yeah, I agree. Is there either in Rhode Island or in Massachusetts, if, uh, I don't know, does Massachusetts have a uh, Workers Whistleblower Protection Act as well? Yes. Yeah. In the interim, is there an ethics hotline or something that someone could call to question that you know of in the state? I'm not, I'm not sure. I do know that the employers are required to post a copy of the law in, in, in a public place. Um, you know, and getting back to the slander libel situation, truth is an absolute defense. Right. So there's no slander, there's no libel if you're telling the truth. And if it's provable, but suppose it's questionable. Well, you know, that's a risk that you take. He said, she said, yeah. it happens all the time, does it not? And sure. then sure. you're in trouble, perhaps. Not surprisingly, on the internet, there is a whistleblowerscenter.com, which is supposedly organized by states, and apparently there's a clickable chat with a counselor for free kind of opportunity. Do you think that this is a wise, reasonable opportunity, or are you just, is it just um, perhaps it's a snag, an opportunity for someone to snag some business? You have the element of uh, an anonymity there, but... I think you, if you're really serious about it, you may want to talk to an attorney. Yeah, although that put, you don't know who you're speaking with like, on the um, internet. Lawyers trolling for business. That's on what the it internet. sounds like. Yeah. If someone makes a claim and it's um, partially made up, does the law, does the employer then have an opportunity to fire that person? Maybe they were just honestly mistaken about what they saw, thought they saw, and it wasn't proven. Can a, an employer then? I don't know. You're Senate an at-will employee. Unless you're under a written contract, you are an at-will employee. So they can fire you for whatever reason they yeah. want, if, as long as it's not, not illegal or discrimination. If you're not protected by the Whistleblowers Act, yeah. it's not because of discrimination mm -hmm. or some other protected area, yeah, they can fire you. Mm -hmm. For those who decide to go to their labor union, is that a good intermediary if there's not an HR person that's... If you're in a union, that's a very good place to go. That's one of the things unions are designed to help you with, any job-related issue. So if you're a member of a union and it's a union uh, shop that you're working in, that's where I'd always start. It's, it seems that at times it would almost be easier or better for you or more comfortable if you weren't involved in even seeing misconduct or something that was slightly inappropriate. But if you have, hopefully what we've had to share with you today has been helpful. Hopefully you will be better prepared if you have to make that decision. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you will continue to stay tuned as our discussion of legal matters continues. What will we talk about next? What will we talk about next? Thoughts? Perhaps um, our NFL coach who is, or some of them anyway, in the league who are likely to um, be paid a bounty. We'll as we were talking about, about the bounties. Yeah, you get a bounty from the Quee, Quee Tam actions. That's Maybe right. we can talk about <laughs> bounties from your employer. Something to stay tuned. Again, thank you. Legal matters continues.